React India. Hello. Hi, React India. Ooh, what the introduction. Thanks. Uh, today we'll talk about really cool stuff. We uh, today we had amazing talks about like bunch of like new technology, future tech, AI, and uh, it's time to talk about uh, AR and understand where we are at in 2023 in AR space. Uh, I mean, AR Vision Pro is coming out next year. Uh, business is getting into AR, so let's see where we're at and how we can create those AR apps nowadays. So about myself, well, I got like a really good introduction. So uh, yeah, that's like AI, by the way, generated thing. So I'm also software architect and consultant in my company, Novik Labs. You have a QR code with a bunch of my like social links, YouTube channel, a bunch of talks, uh, stuff like that. So if you want to follow, check this out, uh, please do. Um, this is my fancy company logo. You can see it also on the side of uh, React India, and um, that's my uh, company um, uh, website and uh, Twitter handle. Um, so before getting into the code, getting into demos, getting into like the cool stuff, I want to talk a, a little bit about history of augmented reality. And let's start with where it all started. When was the first AR? Yell out the year. Come on, interaction, year. 1901. That's the first mention of a year. It was the book. Um, it, it was called The Master Key. And um, a person in the book, the protagonist, he had a marker above his head that could show if the person is good or bad. So that's essentially a year that was introduced even before uh, we thought it's possible. But the real uh, movement towards the AR space started with like Sensorama in 52, continued to these like 68 sold of Damocles. I love the name, by the way. That was the device that weighed like two, three tons. It, w it was like hang from the ceiling above you. And if you mess up with the like, with the device, it probably would fall and kill you. That's the reason for the name. So fa fun fact about that. Then there were AR started into weather broadcasting on the green screen. Uh, essentially, is also like sort of AR visual picture, virtual pictures, 92, 96. And you see the gap between the years. It, it becomes smaller and smaller because advancement in AR becomes more and more dominant. And uh, uh, then NASA developed AR into dashboard for AX38. ITAP was before Google Glass. It was essentially the same idea of Google Glass. It looked really weird. Um, then AR was in BMW commercials. And I'm running through that because it's not a history lesson. We're getting more into uh, how we can use AR nowadays. So Kinect, Google Glass, um, AR was used in manufacturing in 2013. Um, then this is an important part when AR and VR investment reached 1.1 billion. So for all of you that think that AR is kind of gimmicky kind of thing, or VR is kind of gimmicky kind of thing, maybe, but it has potential and has an investment there. Uh, then Microsoft uh, introduced HoloLens. Uh, there was a Meta 2. Pokemon Go. How many of you have heard of, about Pokemon Go? Come on, I need all of you to raise your hands because there is no one single person in the audience that haven't heard about Pokemon Go. Um, and then in 2017, um, Apple introduced ARKit, Google introduced ARCore, and that's uh, kind of milestone. Like from that point on, there there were like bunch of like AR apps in the market, and um, they started as gimmicky, but. Um, Eventually, big retailers such as IKEA, for example, they have AR in their app as, as part of their offering. Um, and in 2018, there was a Magic Leap, which is still, uh, it's, it's kind of, it was released. It was lots of money was invested into that, but it was not, not a thing. It didn't pick up. So we'll talk about the ARKit and the ARCore, and, um, because that's what, can we, uh, that's what we can use on the devices. We'll talk how we can use that. Uh, so, how we do that with the, with the React Native? 
So there is this library, uh, Vero Community, Vero React. This library, and if you've been following all this, uh, some of my talks uh, from last year's, that was the library that I kind of recommend using, and it was maintained back then. It was uh, really nice. It's still nice for certain things. Um, and um, that's an option to write our AR components uh, with React code. Um, and uh, it has its own wrapper to ARKit and ARCore. It had a bunch of features, uh, but it's limited. It's limited to certain things that um, I mean, if you want to have more advanced things, you cannot really do with that, uh, anything with that. So an example, what you can do with that is like having these like Tetris-like experience in, in AR, uh, which is, uh, you see like the plane is not like, it's kind of shaking a little bit, it's not the sta that stable, it's gimmicky at most. It, I don't think people will, if I will show that to a potential investor, I probably will kick me out of the door, right? So it's not something you would go to, <laughs> to investors. But it's nice, it's something good to add to your app to have like additional feature to your app. And yeah, it had levels and stuff. Um, so in order to, to do that, you can um, you have like React component, which is called Scene Navigator. And um, it's a top-level component that loads the ER scene. Um, and uh, props are passed to the scene. And basically, within that, you can define all your components that you need in 3D space. So you need, uh, for instance, the scene itself. So the, the, the camera, the camera to render the content, to understand the content. Uh, you need the lights. So whenever we're dealing with like 3D models, we have different types of lights. We have like ambient lights, we have spotlights, we have directional lights. And uh, you need to and mostly like play around with them with all the, uh, the values there, especially with shadows. Um, and uh, we also can select uh, like a plane um, within AR and based on this plane, we can render certain content. Um, so the question is if AR is just a gimmick, uh, not anymore. Uh, but uh, so I want you to see what AR is actually capable of. So um, beyond these, let's see if mirroring works. Cool. I think, yeah. <coughs> so let's dive into different options that we can use nowadays with uh, AR. So let's start with a simple one. So here you all, and here is our plane. So this is the selection of our plane. So AR understands that this is a stage, this is a surface. If I look down, it will understand that this is the floor. And this is like a helper that helps uh, me understand like where, where the, the surface is. Now you would see these like points floating around, right? It's not, here you see more points and we have kind of inception type of thing. Uh, so these points is what helps AR calculate our distances and calculate where to place objects. The, uh, the tag behind that, the, uh, it's, uh, the tag behind that is called visual inertial odometry and that's basically um, gives us opportunity to understand like the distances and such. Let's put a cube here and uh, as I go closer to the cube, it goes, it becomes bigger, etc. So that's this example. Now, another example, we can get the basic light estimation. Now, whenever we run, I, I mentioned that uh, it's important to understand in 3D space, like how we define lights. Now in AR, it's more tough because we don't know the real lights. Now we actually know them, Obviously, I'm just kidding. Gant is a human being. He won't be a robot. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Um, anyways, let's uh, get. I'm gonna stop mirroring. Let's get back to our slides. So we saw what it is capable of, and uh, you saw a logo on top of this app, Unity. And um, the question is, how many have heard about Unity Game Engine? Cool. Lo lots of you have heard about the, uh, about Unity. How many of you have used Unity? 
Nice, quite a few people. How many of you have used Unity professionally? Few people, that's great. Uh, so some of you, uh, most of you heard about Unity, some of you uh, used Unity, some of you, and uh, less of you used Profession. I hope after this talk, you will be able to use Unity within your React Native applications, which is uh, something cool because with Unity, you can have the framework called AR Foundation, which uh, encapsulates ARKit and ARCore and gives you helpers to create AR content for both platforms. Obviously, like all of you are developers and uh, you would be interested to get your hands dirty on some code, but for uh, designers, for instance, or like level designers or uh, people that don't want to get into the code, that's a really great opportunity. Uh, monetization solutions and AR foundation, that's what we will be using. Um, so the cool part is at certain point Unity was closed, so you could create an app within Unity that will run on device. Um, you cannot change it. It's like the whole interface has to be created within Unity, and that's it. Uh, now, like Unity, and not actually now, but like since 2019, if, if I remember correctly, uh, you can use Unity as a library, uh, meaning you can embed it within native app. For us, it means if you can embed it in native apps, you can embed it in React Native app as well. So in a nutshell, the, uh, um, the architecture of it goes like that. In React Native, we have JavaScript, we have Native, we have uh, here in between, we have the bridge. And uh, we use Unity library, Unity framework to render like AR content or in general 3D content. So let's see a demo, another one. I have a video in case demo won't work, but hopefully it will. Okay, so I have basic React Native app. Just plain screen, Unity screen, go to Unity. Go to Unity, and now I have two screens here. The bottom one is React Native, the top one is Unity. Just basic cool floating in space, cool floating in space. I can message from Unity to React Native, and as you can see, that's pretty fast, like the reply. I can type text here. And the text basically is typed also like within uh, within uh, Unity. Uh, now I can click and get some cool effects. I can also change colors, and all of that is like two-way communication. Like I can communicate from React Native to Unity, from Unity back. Uh, now I can light it up with like some processing effects to get some like this blurry thing. Uh, but yeah, I just want to play a game. So let's just, we have robots. So we can actually load a game within Unity and uh, look at the, at the performance of it, right? So it's both React Native and Unity running in the same, in the same place. Now, another thing that we will do now, we'll have an AR within React Native, within Unity, like kind of that. Uh, um, so the, the thing, this uh, plane detection is called a feather plane, and uh, it's like showing me the, the actual plane, and uh, let me put a robot here. This is a small one. Now the cool part about this robot and about this technology now, so what happens typically in AR, is like AR is overlaid content, right? Overlaid content on top of something, um, like on top of the screen. Ha what happens if I go beyond that? It feels like the robot is occluded by the real object, right? So it's, like, it's called occlusion, right? And this occlusion happens within a pretty performant, actually. Well, there are still some cutoffs, but that's enough for uh, having AR. And I will put this robot here near. Yeah, and as you can see within the games, it happens, it can just go through surfaces. So robot is gone. Uh, cool. So that's how we can use it within React Native, within Unity. And uh, now let's see how we uh, 
how it looks like in the code. So it looks like just like this. We have Unity view, we have a reference to that, and on Unity message, we just like set the, this message. That's the one that we were typing, right? Like from from Unity. Now we have um, the message is basically uh, something like this. We, let me actually point here. So we have this message uh, with game object method name and the message itself. And what I'm doing here, I'm posting message to Unity Ref Current. Meaning, I have a native module. And I post in a message with a game object method name and the message itself. The game object is like an instance within Unity. So it will search, for instance, within Unity called our in interrupt. And will search a method uh, on this instance uh, called like message from React Native. It will pass a JSON string there. And on the Unity side, within C Sharp, we'll take this uh, JSON string. We'll parse that back to an object, a C Sharp object. And we'll use that and do whatever we want. So game, uh, game object uh, in Unity method called payload. In Unity, there, uh, there is an option to add native plugins. Native plugins is the communication between Unity framework and the native side. So we need to create the two files. We'll, like, the example is for iOS. We need to create header and, and M file. And um, I will just go fast through the code because there is a mixture of JavaScript, uh, C Sharp, and Objective-C here, and we want to go into the depth of the code, right? But in a nutshell, I have these, uh, I, I register for uh, API for native calls, and I send message to the mobile app. So fu functions that are listed uh, are available within Unity, and they forward the call to, uh, to the app itself. Uh, then in Unity itself, this is like C, uh, C Sharp script. In Unity itself, I import the DLLs of the Unity, and I have this send message to mobile app on my native plugin. So I have the opportunity to send an option to send from Unity into the mobile app. Uh, so that's how Unity looks like. By the way, it's something like familiar to you. You uh, for most of you have seen Unity. Uh, you need to apply this script to the button, and whenever I clicked on message React Native, it message to um, things uh, to, from Unity to React Native. Uh, so, in order to receive message from React Native, I already told you that we send in the, the stringify JSON. We need to parse it back. So, we basically do this code or like whatever library you prefer for parsing JSON. You parse that into class, and then you do like whatever you want with that. Now, there are some integration steps involved. So let's say you develop your React Native projects. It's there. It's, it's fine. It's working. Now, then you work within Unity. So your project is ready. You're ready to publish it. You pu publish it uh, into your React Native uh, project within um, somewhere within um, uh, your, uh, your, your project, right? Then. Uh, you open the uh, Xcode workspace of React Native project and get the, the, the project that was built into, uh, add that project into your React Native workspace. Uh, and then there are a bunch of uh, steps. You add Unity framework to embedded frameworks because we want to use Unity. You add, uh, you add them here. And you can go through all of these steps through the slides, right? Uh, whenever I, uh, after the talk, I will publish the slides. Uh, then you need to remove Unity Framework for, from build phases, binary with libraries. There are like certain steps. Uh, honestly, you will you won't find these steps in any documentation. So it's some some type of like reverse engineering, like playing around that made it happen. So uh, unfortunately, React Native. Uh, um, um, like you, there are a bunch of libraries: React Native Unity View, React Native uh, Unity. There are no documentation for that, so that's something you can take from these slides and and, and try it out. Um, then you drag and drop um, embedded framework um, to compile sources, and don't forget to do this. I don't know how much time I've spent like looking at my app crashing and not understanding why it crashes because it crashes uh, in a weird way with Unity if you don't enable camera usage description. The reason for that because the Unity is kind of its own thing, 
and React Native is all own thing. You have a crash, you need to debug this crash, reverse engineer that, but the whole like opportunity to use all of the features of ARKit, all of the features of ARCore, and not just using overlay, Tetris, that's it. Now, the question is your use case, right? So if you develop an app with the, um, like something like small gimmick, you want to have like some, um, I don't know, gamification within the app and you want uh, people to play around with this a little bit, yeah, go ahead with Vero. It's fine, it's, it's maintained in a while. I mean, last commit was half a year ago, but um, it's, it's, it's not like it was like two years without, uh, without commits and, and stuff. You can do things with Vero as well. But if you need more um, serious, I would say, capabilities, if you need to track things in more precise way, you can use it with uh, with Unity. And and the, the third option is actually to build your own wrapper to ARKit, ARCore, but that's like an option that uh, I think all of you understand. Like if, if we have React Native and we have native code, you can bridge this native code, but it requires a lot of effort. Um, this requires less, especially it, uh, you can take the project, give it to the team specialized in Unity, they build the AR module for you. You take the module, you embed into your app. I had uh, and have clients that basically have um, asked me like, what would you use? I need like a really simple use case. I need like to, uh, to have like just overlaid and that's it. And for their use case, Vero was a perfect choice, but I had some clients that want to render, let's say furniture, but it, it had to be like on, on precise space, it had to, to be stable, it had to be like stable enough to be occluded. So like to present them to, that to the clients, for their case, yeah, they should go with Unity. Now there are caveats with that because Unity is like a heavy thing, so the app, app will be heavy. So there is no magic, like silver bullet, no magic there. Unity is a heavy framework. But if you have an app and uh, there is an actual business use case to use AR to its uh, capabilities, uh, add body tracking, add um, occlusion, add like more precise anchoring, go, go for Unity. Uh, now, to integrate this with React Native, uh, I talked about like bridging between native modules and, and React Native, but I never showed the code, so let's look a little bit into the code. So this is a code f that you can, like, RCT export module, export, uh, RCT export view property. That's from the docs. You can basically export any module from the native side, and you can exp um, export a prop from, from the native side, like so. Um, and uh, then we have um, the RCT export method under our native plugins. We have this Unity post message. And uh, that's how we send events to JavaScript. And this bit, this bit here, is really important one. Um, what does it mean? People who attended my workshop on performance uh, heard from me saying, like, you, w you don't want to run computations on the JavaScript thread. You want to run things, you want to reduce your renders, you want to run things on the main thread. That's, uh, that means that the... Uh, that will run like on the main thread. Um, and uh, that's what we, um, we need to add there. That's for sure whenever we create native plugins. Um, and um, that's the React Native Unity view. It has this, uh, this method, which is uh, Unity uh, Framework API to call method by name. Remember RN interop call from the JavaScript at the like, middle of the slides when I told you how to communicate from Unity, from React Native to Unity. That's what essentially it's calling. We're calling the method within the Unity by its name. And the React Native Unity view is a f wrapper abstraction to Unity framework. There are a bunch of more co code involved into like embedding and registering in the framework. I want to abstract that for you. Um, getting back to JavaScript side, uh, we have the component name, we have the React Native Unity view, we have rea uh, required uh, native components. So, so it looks pretty much similar to how you uh, would use a uh, um, wrap native module for React Native. And the end result is uh, what you've seen. 
the Unity view, and you can use on Unity message to get messages from Unity. Um, there are a bunch of other options to uh, to actually like post a message. In order to post, we use dispatch view manager command, etc. But you can go into the code uh, later on, and that's like the duplication of the code that you've seen in the beginning. Uh, so let's get to the cool news. There is a library for that. <laughs> well, that's not the news, but and I, uh, I kind of spoiled it in the, in the middle. I said like React Native Unity View, React Native Unity. So there is a library called React Native Unity. Uh, it does uh, all of that, like literally like all the wrapping, all the like native code that you've seen, it does all of that. But this, that slide that you need to memorize for the steps, it still, uh, it still stays. You need to do all of, all of these steps. But you don't need to write these native plugins. You don't need to write C Sharp for like embedding and combining everything. But now you know how it works under the hood. So if you have a bug with React Native Unity, you would be able to get into the slides, like look a little bit into the code and fix that. Ta-da! <laughs> so no need to write native code. Still need to do all the setup. And uh, now you know how it actually works. So there are a bunch of helpful links here. So there is React Native Unity, the, the repo. Um, uh, props to the guy that created that. Uh, there are like some maintenance go going on there. Not enough, need to more people to step in. Uh, this is the demo code. So if you want to look at the code, how it's written, uh, etc., it's there. Uh, the, this one, the AR samples, that's... Um, the part that I showed you with all the like Unity um, and um, rendering like the the surface and stuff like that, and also like the uh, the cool thing, but you already know that Unity has an asset store with uh, lots of assets that you can use and create your air apps, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is QR code, by the way, to like the same that was in the beginning for a bunch of my social links, company links, etc. And um, thanks a lot. Um, please check out like uh, the social links and everything. Check out like my website, uh, like my company website. There are a bunch of like services that pro we provide. This part was about this one, the future tech integration, as I like to call it. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks a lot. Nice, uh, nice to be here at React India. And uh, thanks.